everybody. Thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole with Topaz. And today's Quick Tip Thursday session is about the seven tools I feel you need to know about in Topaz Adjust. Topaz Adjust is a very comprehensive and robust program that allows you to add dramatic and brilliant contrast, really great detail and vivid color to your image in just a few clicks. And today we're going to be covering the tools that I think you need to know about to help you get some great effects or at least edit some of the effects you can get from some of our presets. I'm just going to make a quick copy of my layer here in Photoshop just so I can show you before and after later on. Let's go filter Topaz Labs Topaz Adjust. If you're unfamiliar with Topaz Adjust, um, over on the left hand side is where our presets and preset collections are and this is um, very similar to a lot of our other programs as well. And if you want to view a lot of the presets, you can just go into our grid view and then select a preset that might be good for you. But today we're going to be covering the actual specific tools located over here on the right hand side. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my left hand panel and just kind of free up some space there. Now over on the right hand side is where you're going to find all of your individual um, sliders and parameters. The first area that I feel like you really need to know about within this program is going to be in the Global Adjustments tab in the Adaptive Exposure module. When you open that up, it's going to be the first two sliders, Adaptive Exposure and Regions. This is where the core technology of Topaz Adjust really exists. I know many photographers who only use these top two sliders and I feel like it's the most important sliders to know about within Topaz Adjust. You can kind of think about it like adaptive exposure. Well, let me um, just show you here. As you take adaptive exposure up, you'll start to see that some really nice shadows happen, some really nice um, highlights happen, and your midtones start to even out. And that's really what adaptive, the adaptive exposure is trying to do. I'm going to take that regions all the way to one so you can kind of see how they work together. But again, as you take that adaptive exposure up, you'll start to... If your regions are at one, see some really uh, deep shadows happening, some brighter highlights and midtones. As you take your region slider up, it's going to break your image down into smaller and smaller regions, allowing that adaptive exposure technology to be applied in smaller and smaller areas. So you'll start to see that if you look at, let's say, the building itself right here, that you start to get a highlight a shadow, and really nice mid-tones all in that one little area. So as you take that region slider up, it basically just balances out your image, allowing for shadows, highlights, and mid-tones all to be applied throughout that area. I'm going to take that adaptive exposure down because it's a little high for me right now, maybe about 0.4, and I'll take my region slider down as well. But both of these adjustments, when working together, can open up your shadows beautifully, add some really lovely tone into your highlight areas, any areas that might be clipping, and just balance out the overall adjustment while adding some really beautiful detail along with it. So here's before, here's after. Now this is fairly strong. Let me take this down a little bit further. <clears throat> All right, that should do for now. The second area that I feel is almost just as essential as that first tool is going to be located within the details module below the adaptive exposure module, and that is going to be our process details independently. You probably noticed whenever we worked with our adaptive exposure and region slider that detail was automatically added into the image without actually coming in and working with our detail sliders in this detail tab. So we didn't manually add details in, but details and texture was was brought out just with our exposure uh, adjustments within that adaptive exposure area. And that's because in the algorithm behind the program, they are connected um, by default. So as you take those exposure settings up, you're going to increase your details as well automatically. To separate this um, detail enhancement from the exposure enhancement. It's very easy to do so. You just come down to this process details independently checkbox, click on that, and you're going to see an automatic smoothing of the details within the image. Let's go ahead and turn that details on. I'll show you that one more time. Here's without the check mark, 
and here's with the check mark, and it just automatically smooths everything out. So if you like the exposure settings that you've applied to your image in the adaptive exposure area, but you don't like the grunginess and the texture detail that's been applied along with it, you can come in, say process details independently, and then independently uh, enhance the details using the detail sliders. And that takes us to our third tool that I feel like you really need to know about, and those are the detail sliders, the strength and detail boost, also located within the details module. The strength is going to increase the overall details of your image, so you'll start to see those larger shadows start to pop out, and um, larger details, medium-sized details, start to come out with that details adjustment. But detail boost is where you really start to get that textured contrast and some of that grungy effect that Topaz is known for. So as you take that up to the right, you really start to enhance some of those um, brick details, all of that kind of dirty grunginess that can be really nice if applied at the right on the right image at the right setting. Now for me, this is really high. That's one thing you have to watch out with the detail boost is that the slider really adds in a lot of that um, boost very quickly. So I usually only add a little bit to get some really beautiful contrast happening in my texture. So here's before the detail adjustment and here's after. The fourth thing that I think you really need to know about is also another boost slider, but it's located within our color uh, module. If I open that up, you'll see underneath the saturation slider is a saturation boost. The saturation slider is just a typical saturation, um, let me scroll out here so you can see the whole image. It's just a typical saturation slider. It's going to increase the saturation of your whole image and um, allow for that saturation increase to apply everywhere. The saturation boost slider is the tool that I think you need to know about, which kind of evens out your saturation. So as you take that saturation boost up, you'll see that it's more, um, or it's applying more to the desaturated colors, such as the bricks of the building itself, and not so much the sky, because the intent of the saturation boost is to increase the desaturated colors up to the level of the already saturated, um, highly saturated colors in your image, balancing out that saturation and creating a really nice color pop in those areas that might not have enough color for you. So that saturation boost slider is the number four tool that I think you need to know about. Next is our noise reduction tool that I think you need to know about. A lot of people don't know that Adjust has a noise reduction slider. Many times, when working with uh, Topaz Adjust, after going through the exposure details and color enhancements, you'll start to see that any sort of noise or smaller detail that were in the smooth areas of your image really start to stand out and become even more noise-like. So here's before we started our adjustments, and here's after. You can see that the noise was there prior to the adjustments, but it was much softer, it blended much nicer, and now that we've increased it, the detail and contrast, it just pops out that much more. Within adjust, we have this noise suppression area specifically to handle that. So you can just come in and suppress the noise up to the degree that you want, and then um, use the amount slider to kind of uh, work with the degree that it's going to continue flattening out that noise and removing that texture. So you have the, these two sliders to really work with the noise suppression. Here's before. Here's after. Now this is a great tool for you, especially if you have a lot of smooth areas within your image, but when you're working with something that you do want to add a lot of detail in, such as this image, I really wanted a lot of detail here in the bricks and the texture of the building itself, but not the sky. Unfortunately, when I did the noise reduction, it applied to the entire image and not just the sky. Well, that takes me to our number uh, six area that I think you need to know about, and that is located in the local adjustment um, tab, and it's our local adjustment brush out brush. And this gives you the opportunity to selectively brush out the adjusted effect out of just certain areas of your sky. So as you, or of your image, and in this instance, it's gonna be our sky. So I'm gonna to go to my brush out brush, click on that. You can adjust your brush size down in our brush uh, slider area. I'm gonna take my brush up. 
The opacity, I'm going to take all the way up because I'm going to take off the entire adjustment. Hardness, I'm going to take that down. And edge aware is really where you need to uh, pay attention. If you have really strong contrasted lines like this between your sky and your foreground or something like that, taking that edge aware all the way up to one is going to make your life so much easier. It's just going to allow you to get a very quick mask that's going to be very specific and um, you don't really have to worry about being really exact with your brush strokes. As long as you keep the crosshairs of your brush over the area that you want to adjust, which is in this case the sky area, and make sure that crosshair, which is located directly in the middle of your brush, doesn't go into, in this case, the building and just stays on the sky, I can easily create a very exact mask as you can see over here in the right hand thumbnail, I have quickly been able to get into all the little nooks and crannies of this building's, um, of the roof line, and didn't have to do a lot of work here. Now I can take my edge aware all the way down. My brush is now what I like to call a, a dumb brush, so I don't have to worry about the edge awareness. I can just come in and quickly paint around and take out the adjustments within the sky. Now I only have those adjustments, the adjusted area on the building itself, and now I have a nice smooth sky. That's a really important tool to know about it if you're not familiar. The last area that I find that I use the most is located within the finishing touches uh, tab of our program. We have a lot of modules in here that allow you to add little finishing touches and really make the effect your own, like warmth and vignette and tone. But the one that I find that I use over 50% of the time with in the adjust workflow is the transparency. Majority of the time I get down to this area and I'm adding some other things in and I you know, maybe gaze away at my other screen or another image and I look back and I think, oh wow, that's a little too strong for me or sometimes way too strong. I got a little overzealous in my processing and it just went over the top. Instead of going up to my global adjustments and working with my adaptive exposure, detail, color, etc., I can just come into my transparency tab or module and increase my overall transparency, which is to decrease the opacity of my effect. And it blends that original image, the, the, the base image back in with my affected area. And then I have exactly the effect that I want without having to go back in and make all these individual adjustments up in my global adjustments. So I was able to really decrease that kind of strong effect, but still get a very beautiful effect on my building. I'm gonna press okay and show you the before and after. Here's before and after. And those are the top seven tools that I think you need to know about in Topaz Adjust. I hope this gave you some good tips into which tools can help you effectively get the look you're after within Topaz Adjust. And I hope that you're able to join us next week for some of our Adjust and Guest Presenter webinars. Take care, everybody. Have a great day.